Okay, so what we're going to be looking at this go round is the second half of those westward expansion notes that I gave you on Tuesday night. So you're going to use the second two pages of your outline to fill these out. Shouldn't be that hard. A lot of these names and people that I'm getting ready to talk about should be super familiar to you. So um, just make sure you have all the details written down so that you can be part of the activity in class. So some of the things, or one of the things that's going to be going on during this time period is we're going to have a mini industrial revolution. Not the same as that big industrial re revolution that's going on in the late 1800s and the early 1900s, but a lot of these inventions are going to lead to that overall bigger industrial revolution. So the first one is the cotton gin, and the cotton gin was invented by Eli Whitney. Um, and what the cotton gin, gin did, guys, was you would think that it would make, you know, you wouldn't need as many slaves after you get the cotton gin. But unfortunately we did. It was able to increase the production of cotton so much that we needed more slaves working in the field. So this is one of the things that's going to cause a dramatic increase in the slavery um, in the South especially. Um, second is Joe Anderson and Cyrus McCormick. Um, and they work to invent the mechanical reaper. And once again, this is going to help with farming and agriculture. Um, it increased the productivity of the American farmer. Essentially, instead of hand reaping, they were able to mechanically do it. Um, and if you've ever seen somebody reap it by hand, you've got this big, long sword-looking thing that you are cutting down uh, wheat with. The mechanical reaper allowed the machine to do it instead of the person. Third thing, we've already talked about this, is the steamboat. Um, it was improved by Robert Fulton, um, and it produced faster river transportation. We were able to go up and down that Mississippi River, especially, a lot more quickly. Um, plantations and farms especially really, really got the benefits from this steamboat because they were able to ship their raw goods, that raw cotton, raw tobacco, up north to be actually be produced in the factories or manufactured in the factories. So that cotton would become clothes once it got up to the north. The cigarettes would, or the tobacco would become cigarettes once it got north. They didn't just start off that way. And then the final thing was the steam locomotive and that allowed faster transportation across the land, didn't even have to deal with the steamboats. Um, so these two things are gonna be the ones that change the life most, the steam engine and the steamboat. So during this time period, we're going to start to see the rise of this abolitionist movement. And an abolitionist is somebody who believed in the end of slavery. They didn't think that slavery should exist. They thought it was a moral wrong. Now, you found abolitionists in the North and the South both, but of course the majority of them are going to be in the North. Um, abolitionists t tended to be wealthy, educated people. Um, they oftentimes published books and had these serious debates about the, you know, whether slavery should be legally legal or illegal. So you've got three examples up here. The first one is Harriet Tubman. Um, she's someone that I have the picture of in my classroom. Um, she was the essentially started the Underground Railroad which was that escape route for slaves in the South to be able to escape to the North or West. The Underground Railroad was not an actual railroad, okay? It was a s different series of houses and churches and businesses that hid the slaves from whoever they, was, whoever they were looking for or whoever was looking for them, okay? So it's not an actual railroad. It's just a connection of different points for those slave, s slaves to escape. Then you have Frederick Douglass, and Frederick Douglass was a former slave who escaped slavery, um, becomes an abolitionist when he moves up north. Then you have William Lloyd Garrison, who was an abolitionist leader, and he believed slavery was immoral and demanded that they be immediately freed. So these abolitionists oftentimes differed on their opinions as to whether or not slaves should be immediately freed or if it was something that we should work towards as a nation slowly. Um, so that's where you're going to see some arguments between those two. So I'm going to take a second right now and pause. What I want you to do is write the word manifest destiny at the top of your notes. If you have this written in your notes tomorrow, I'm going to give you five bonus points. 
This is just to make sure that you are actually watching the videos instead of pressing pause on my face. Thank you. Coral Stevens, call the main office, please. Coral Stevens, please call the main office. Okay. So the beliefs of the civil rights movement, <clears throat> civil rights movement is going to start during this time period and it's going to extend all the way through modern day. Uh, different groups are going to be focused focused during the civil rights movement. Civil rights movement. First one is the suffrage movement. Suffrage is the right to vote. So um, a lot of the supporters of this movement felt that all men and women should have the right to vote, and that included slaves. It included any kind of women, um, African American women or white women. Um, supporters really believed that women, especially, were deprived of four basic rights. The first one was the right to vote. The second was the right to equal educational opportunities, especially in higher education. The third were equal opportunities in business. And then the fourth was limited rights to own property. So women were not um, really given the right to own property. Um, they were not allowed to um, purchase it from their husbands. If their husband were to die, they weren't allowed to inherit it. Um, so this movement was led by strong women who began their campaign before the Civil War and then it extended after the Civil War, like I was saying. Guys, this was a long, drawn-out process, and there is any time throughout history that you can say that there's a civil rights movement going on, whether it is for women or for African Americans or for the right for people to get married. There have been civil rights movements throughout history. This is just kind of the, the starting point for that. So some of the female leaders of the suffrage movement, I'm sorry this is hard to read, I think somebody's coat was brushing up against it, but you've got Isabel Sojourner Truth, um, she was a suffragist and abolitionist, which means she fought for the right to vote and she fought for slaves to be freed. Um, she was born a slave and then worked for equal rights for women as well as for slavery. Um, Susan B. Anthony, and you've probably heard Susan B. Anthony, she was on the Silver Dollar. Um, she is a supporter of the suffrage movement as well. She declared that women and men were entitled to the same rights in all areas of life. And then the third one is Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Um, she was a leader in the suffrage movement. She and Susan B. Anthony worked really, really close to, closely together. Um, you can see that there are pictures of them, you know, working on all this stuff together. And she wrote the Seneca Falls Declaration. And the Seneca Falls Declaration was actually read at a convention in Seneca Falls that was known for, um, you know, they, they got really rowdy about trying to get women to vote. So we're going to talk about all of this stuff a little bit more extensively, but I want you to go ahead and be familiar with these names. Um, so I will see you guys in class tomorrow.